Before we actually get to the marble, I want to show you what these sanding tools are actually used for. They're for the vine charcoal. So we're going to take a stick of vine charcoal, if you want, and you're going to sharpen it. And I think it's helpful because some of those sticks that I put into your bucket, buckets, they're, they're kind of thick and it's hard to find the edge on them. So that's why it's nice to go to the a garbage can and grab one of these sanders and rotate and sand at the same time, almost like you're pretending to shade, but you do have to be angled. See how I'm working up a point? I'm twisting while I'm shading kind of back and forth or doing a back and forth motion. And I'm angling it until I get a tip similar to a pencil. Here's what it looks like after I've taken some time to sharpen it. So yeah, it looks like a point. It's important that you take the dustings from uh, like the little powder left over and you tap it on the side of the garbage can. It's not good to just kind of blow it off or let it go into the air. Tap it gently into the garbage can. Still usable if there's black on it. It's not usable if you try to, to kind of go back and forth and it doesn't pull off material. So in that case, you switch to a new leaf of the sandpaper. So it works kind of like a note Book. You're just going to tear off the top layer and underneath is a whole pad of sandpaper. Okay, now we're going to our small gray sheet of paper. These measure five by seven and I'm going to use a stencil for the first one and then I'm going to freehand the second one. I'm going to allow you to do the same so that way kind of to cut corners here. But what I don't want you to do is to press hard or to go thick with your line. You can see I've allowed this to be a broken or dashed line. That's intentional. And then I'm going to get my second marble back there. You've got to watch where you place that second marble because it's almost midway up there. And I'm doing some of those hatch marks to make this uh, a round circle. Because remember, a circle is hard to do, especially if you are trying to do it the first time out. And I really recommend the hatch mark marks on there. You also need to indicate the horizon line where the land and sky meet or where the tabletop and the background meet. Okay, so going forward, you are going to be outlining the cast shadows. And of course, we're only working in vine at first. This is the same steps, the same methods that you'll be using whenever you do charcoal. You always start with vine first. And then I just kind of patted it with a chamois on my finger and patted it so that the outline is faded. And now I'm filling in the background. And I started out using the side of it, but then I blended it and I didn't like how it looked. So then I shaded it in neatly. Um, and you can address all the shadows with the vine charcoal. So the darkness of the background and the cast shadows, you can go ahead and use the vine charcoal on there. And you can see I shaded over the background using kind of a angled stroke because I thought that would blend better and it did. So that's good. So I'm using vine charcoal at first, but that is a really dark background. Okay, so I didn't tell you, one of the great things about working on toned paper, on gray tone paper, is it does some of the work for you. It takes care of all the mid-tones or light range mid-tones, your twos, your threes, because it already is that value. Um, we're going to be putting in instead the highlights, something that you haven't done before. But don't worry, that comes at the very end. And you can see um, I'm softening my edges. I'm trying to blur the horizon line there and blur the edges on the cast shadows as well. And now I'm going in with a stick of compressed charcoal. And I'm going to shade that whole background in dark. Now you can use the 6B pencil, but I felt like that would take a lot of time. So instead I am working with the brick and I can get you one. Um, there's enough for every student to have one. I do think you should put it on your easel instead of in your bucket because that black charcoal will get everywhere. So I think you should just leave it on the easel itself on, on the ledge on the shelf there. Okay, so I did get some outlines on the actual marbles themselves. Like I was doing that kind of twist or that stripe that wraps through that first one. And remember how we were talking about focal point. You should figure out what the focal point is in this picture. It's kind of obvious because it's the one that's largest and it's in focus and it has an interesting stripe. 
Um, that's important for you to figure out though. Whenever you're doing a drawing or a painting, it doesn't matter if you are looking at something in real life, like you're looking at it in real time, or if you're working from a photo reference. Okay, so shading on the marbles can look intimidating at first. Except for if you think about it in terms of values and kind of the patterns that are within each marble, it's not so hard. That's what I'm doing. That's all this is. That's how I'm able to fake the illusion of a marble is by uh, looking at it in terms of value. And I'm asking myself where those ombres are or gradual shifts between one value to another and I'm looking for those. The more gradual shifts you have, the better. The less outlining you have, the better too. And there was like kind of a stripe on that back one. I decided that I wanted to work on that back one first. And it doesn't, you don't necessarily have to start with that one first. I just wanted to keep the one in the foreground clean. I didn't want to get it all dirty. Be really careful with how you're holding your pencils. I'm seeing a lot of you holding your pencils so close that you're touching the paper. That's a big no-no. You want to hold your pencil far back and um, you want to hold it gently, not hard. Because it's hard to get the lighter values if you are uh, incorrectly holding your pencil too close to the point. And then I'm going in here to the cast shadow. There's a real ombre or gradual shift that's happening to that cast shadow and there's a little opening there where there's a highlight. Many of you were really successful doing the sphere. This is very similar except for you're looking more at the light patterns and the different things happening within each object. The top part of that first marble in front you can leave blank for now. And you have to remember, and I had to remind myself of this too, that the light is coming from the upper left. And if it were a white shape or a white marble, there'd be a form shadow, but there isn't really because it's clear. So the light is passing through there. In fact, that's why you have that little highlight within the cast shadows because the light's shining through. And there's all these little reflections. And remember what I told you guys. You don't want to uh, fill in where the highlights are going to go. And here I am. Okay, so I'm getting ready to put in the highlights. I'm erasing where I know they're going to go. And then I'm taking the white charcoal pencil. And yes, there is such a thing. And I'm popping them in. If they're really bright, I'm going to go in tight circles to make that look like a shiny glow spot. Really important though, that with the white charcoal, you don't put it on top of black charcoal. So you have to have blank gray paper exposed before you pop that highlight in. You want to compare the size, the placement of the highlights to the other highlights, like on the uh, second marble there, that's important. So again, you always erase out and putting it in the shadow too, because there's that light bouncing into the shadow. Erase out and then pop the highlights in. The white charcoal pencil also requires you to use pressure sensitivity, which means not every highlight is using the same amount of pressure. We're going to put a little bit of white in the foreground, and for that, you actually need to go with a light amount of pressure, so you get a paler version of white. So here's what it looks like so far, and I'm going to put a little bit of light right where that cast shadow meets the actual form of the marble to help pop it out there. And you can squint your eyes if you're having trouble looking for this. Now this is a quick drawing. This is an exercise. It's not meant to be perfect. I wanted you to have the experience of working on a gray sheet of paper because I'm going to give you the option to do a gray paper, use a toned paper like this for our project. And I wanted you to have some prior experience.